Asia, the biggest continent on the planet. From the frozen, stormy waters of the Bering Strait to the picturesque coastline of Turkey, Asia spans more degrees of latitude than any other continent. The time difference between its extremes is as much as 13 hours. The Qinghai Tibet Plateau, the roof of the world, is the source of more great rivers than anywhere else on Earth. From this high point in Asia's interior, rivers radiate in every direction. Where they reach the lowlands, they have brought life to civilizations. Over the course of thousands of years, rivers have nurtured the land and the people who live on it. In June 2014, the city of Doha hosted a meeting of UNESCO's World Heritage Committee. China, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan successfully lobbied for a new addition to be made to the World Heritage List, the routes network of the Chang'an Tian Shan Corridor. The Great Silk Road fully corresponds to the principles and activities of The 5,000-kilometer-long ancient trade route extended from east into Central Asia. It connects 22 historic sites in China, 8 in Kazakhstan, and 3 in Kyrgyzstan. The corridor's inclusion on the World Heritage List recognized the importance of the Silk Road, which it was part of. It also highlighted how, historically, civilizations have maintained channels of communication. Golden warrior statues are a feature of city squares across Kazakhstan. The Golden Warrior is an important part of the country's cultural heritage. The original Golden Warrior was found in an ancient burial mound, surrounded by 4,000 gold ornaments. His weapons comprised a short sword at his left hip, a long sword at his right, and in his right hand, a whip. This is a classic image of the Kazakh nomad. To date, seven sets of golden armor have been discovered. As national treasures of Kazakhstan, they have toured Asia and Europe. The sophistication of the gold armor testifies to the splendor of ancient Central Asian civilization. To date, around 300 sites in Asia have been acknowledged by UNESCO as World Heritage Sites. Petra, in southern Jordan, was made a World Heritage Site in 1985. These ancient ruins, now resting silently in a valley, 
were once a great city and major hub on the trade routes between the Arabian Peninsula and the Mediterranean. The enchanting pink color the structures assume at sunrise and sunset have earned it the alternative name Rose City. In 2007, Petra was included among the new seven wonders of the world. And a decade later, a campaign was launched to twin Petra with the other six modern wonders. First to enter into the relationship was the Great Wall of China. Like Petra, the Jiayu Pass on the Great Wall was a key point on the ancient Silk Road. Petra and the Great Wall are also both notable for the effective use their ancient builders made of the terrain and the tools available to them in building structures without harming the environment. Each of Asia's world heritage sites has witnessed the rise and fall of civilizations. With their roots in the past and present, and as witnesses to the communication among civilizations, they continue to inspire us still today. Deep in the forests of Southeast Asia lies one of the biggest religious complexes in the world. Angkor Wat's history can be traced back to the 12th century AD. It represents the golden age of the Khmer Empire and serves as a symbol of modern Cambodia. More than five million tourists visit it every year. Much of its allure comes from the entanglement of stone and statues with old tree roots. Its illusory charm embodies elements of Eastern philosophy and art. This massive and intricate complex is built of carved sandstone. No mortar or other adhesive was used. The stones are kept in place by their shape and sheer weight. But it's in the images carved into the stones that the art of Angkor Wat really shines. Complex scenes and vivid characters overlap to create a sense of depth and produce a masterpiece of world art. Angkor Wat was discovered by accident after lying forgotten for 400 years. The people who visit it today, while marveling at the site's mysterious beauty, can hardly fail to notice the damage caused by centuries of weathering. In 1993, UNESCO added Angkor Wat to the list of world heritage in danger. The ensuing restoration project brought together experts from across Asia. Indians restored Ta Prom Temple, Japanese Bayon Temple, Prasat Suo Prat and the North Libraries, and Chinese Chaose Tabada and Ta Keo Temples. In total, 37 countries have participated in the restoration of Angkor Wat. The people of Cambodia today are eager to revive Angkor Wat's history. In the mid-20th century, the Apsara's dance was created, taking its inspiration from traditional Khmer dance and Angkor Wat itself.
Many of its 4,500 movements imitate the actions of the carved figures at the temple. The smile of Angkor uses elements from modern dance to describe the history of Khmer civilization and tell classic tales from Hinduism. In this way, Khmer culture is being passed on and spread. In the course of history, there have been civilizations that have faded or disappeared. Despite these setbacks, humankind remains steadfast in its determination to preserve its heritage. Among the southern slopes of the Himalayas lies the Kathmandu Valley an area littered with sites of historical and cultural interest. Patan Durbar Square contains classic Nawari temples and palaces dating from the 16th to the 19th century. They include this nine-story temple which is a World Heritage Site. On April 25, 2015, a magnitude 8.1 earthquake caused the four upper stories to collapse. In the aftermath of the quake, a Chinese historic building preservation team traveled to Nepal. The restoration work required Chinese and Nepalese experts to work closely together. Every piece of stone and wood found among the debris was marked and catalogued. Historical records and local rules on the construction of religious buildings were referenced to ensure that everything was put back in the right place. The work required high levels of cooperation, patience, and professionalism. Over the course of several millennia, various events have occurred that have caused the loss or destruction of many elements of Asia's heritage. Today, on a continent founded on dialogue and cooperation, people are doing everything in their power to protect their civilizations. We come nearest to the great when we are great in humility. Let life be beautiful like summer flowers and death like autumn leaves. These charming and philosophical words were written by the Indian poet Rabindranath Tagore. Tagore has been called the conscience and soul of India. Many of his works, including Jitanjali, The Crescent Moon, the gardener and stray birds enjoy worldwide fame. Throughout his life, Tagore traveled across Asia, Europe, and the Americas, introducing the world to Asian literature, encouraging cultural exchange, and praising Eastern civilization. He called for equality, peace, and dialogue among civilizations. When he visited China, he said, I do not know why coming to China seems to me like returning to my native soil. I always feel that India has been one of China's extremely close relatives, 
and China and India have been enjoying time-honored and affectionate brotherhood. Asia's cultural heritage is among the most diverse in the world. The civilizations of Asia, in the course of experiencing highs and lows, have always been sustained by their cultures and traditions. In the summer of 1964, the Olympic torch arrived in Tokyo. To mark the fact that this was the first time the modern Olympics had been held on the continent, the torch was first flown to West Asia, from where it traveled through Central, South, Southeast, and East Asia, visiting key cities along the way. Hosting the Olympic Games brought Asian traditional culture into the global spotlight. Twenty-four years later, Korean culture took center stage during the opening ceremony of the 1988 Summer Olympics in Seoul. The theme song, Hand in Hand, sampled the Korean folk melody, Arirang. The song, an example of different cultures integrating, was a worldwide hit. In 2008, at the opening ceremony of the Beijing Olympics, elements from 5,000 years of Chinese culture were given their chance to shine. Quotes from Confucius, flying apsaras, calligraphy, and traditional Chinese music, literature, painting, and songs, even philosophy, were presented to hundreds of millions of viewers around the world. As Asia's economies continue to grow, so the continent's cultural power and confidence is also on the rise. In the 20th century, animated films, video games, and other technology-based cultural products began developing rapidly in Japan. The country became the world's biggest producer and exporter of animated films. Around six in every 10 of them seen globally originate in Japan. Hayao Miyazaki is a legendary Japanese filmmaker who has been working since 1964. He created a unique genre of films that combine advanced animation techniques and touching, heartwarming stories. His work is much loved for its sincere emotion and traditional Japanese ambiance. Hayao Miyazaki, an Asian artist, has been the trailblazer in elevating cartoons to the level of high culture. In 1913, India's first feature film was produced. Based on a local fairy tale, Raja Harish Chandra laid the foundation for the style, content, and storytelling techniques of Indian cinema and heralded the birth of Bollywood. With time, the city of Mumbai would develop into the world's biggest center of film production after Hollywood. Hey. 
The 21st century has witnessed major achievements in filmmaking across Asia, from Iran in the west and Thailand in the southeast to India in the south and Japan, Korea and China in the east. In 2018, the film markets of China, South Korea, Japan and India were worth a combined 15 billion US dollars, considerably more than that of North America. China has become the world's second biggest film market and filmmaking has developed into the industry featuring the closest cultural exchange and cooperation among Asian countries. Built on the solid foundation of ancient traditions, the creativity and influence of Asian culture is gaining in strength. On the streets of Vietnam, scores of schoolgirls wearing white ao dai, the national dress, are living examples of how the country protects and passes on its culture. The origin of the ao dai can be traced back over 2,000 years. The earliest versions were a flowing garment consisting of four pieces of cloth. The finest ao dai are made from top-grade silk. But different versions can be worn for daily life or for important events. The ao dai has, over the centuries, absorbed elements from many other cultures, yet it remains a uniquely Vietnamese form of dress. It has its roots in the traditional local culture, but is also adapting to the times. These days, designers are exploring ways of bringing new life to this traditional garment. Indonesia. On many of this country's thousands of islands, different styles have evolved of batik, the country's traditional fabric. Batik is an important symbol of Indonesian culture. Although there are those who say it originated in Sri Lanka, most locals agree that it's uniquely Indonesian. The authorities have even made every Friday Batik Day, when all government officials and employees of major companies must wear Batik clothes to work. Using traditional skills handed down through the generations, artisans spend several weeks making a two meter long piece of Batik cloth. This batik designer in Bandung is attempting to blend modern designs and traditional patterns. The fabric, once used exclusively for clothing, is now being adapted for bags and accessories, even high-heeled shoes, as well as other products designed with young people in mind. The coming together of tradition and fashion is creating something new. Rugs, a key element of ancient Persian civilization, are produced using immensely complex skills. Dyeing techniques and exquisite weaving, refined in the course of many centuries, produce carpets that are not only considered among the finest in the world, but also retain their rich colors for hundreds of years. The rugs are works of art designed for the floor, 
capable of brightening up any house. Around the world, there are temples, famous buildings, art galleries and museums that collect them. Today, Persian rugs are works of art, elements of a luxury lifestyle and an investment. The civilizations of Asia are advancing, powered by innovation. At the same time, more and more ancient traditions are being preserved. South Asia has a unique climate and geography. In Sri Lanka, the elephant is a symbol of good fortune and great strength. For centuries, people here have celebrated the Festival of the Tooth, which every Sri Lankan is expected to participate in at least once in their lifetime. Here, 70% of the population are Sinhalese, and Indian Buddhism has deep roots. As nightfall approaches, elephants clad in ceremonial garments parade through the streets, accompanied by dancers and musicians. The leading animal carries the sacred tooth relic of the Buddha. Kandyan dance, which has its roots in early Sinhalese culture, is a major feature of the festival. Today, an increasing number of Sri Lankan children are learning the dance, which combines elements from different ethnic groups. The subtle movements of Tamil dance, the powerful rhythms of Kandyan dance, and the vigor of various other local dances. It's an example of how this country's various civilizations have coexisted and interacted throughout the past 2,000 years. At Asia's southern extreme lie the Maldives, a country consisting of 26 tiny islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Land accounts for only around a quarter of a percent of Maldivian territory. The rest is its territorial waters. Counting its land area alone makes the Maldives the smallest country in Asia. For centuries, the Maldives has served as a stopover for ships crossing the Indian Ocean. The rich and diverse culture, including elements absorbed from seafaring peoples from around the world, as well as the tropical scenery and clear waters, have made the islands a popular tourist destination, attracting 1.5 million visitors every year. In August 2018, the China-Maldives Friendship Bridge the country's first inter-island bridge was open to traffic. By connecting the capital and its airport, the bridge is benefiting locals and tourists alike. The history of the Maldives is imbued with humankind's maritime tradition. Yellowfin tuna, which sells for over 7,000 US dollars a ton, is a vital source of income for the local fishermen. 
yet they never use bait in catching the fish because the younger tuna aren't attracted by hooks without bait, stocks are preserved, and the fishermen can earn a living without causing too much harm to the local ecosystem. The tradition of respect for and gratitude to the ocean has been passed down throughout the generations. Strict measures designed to protect the environment have been in effect here for over a decade, which benefits both the fragile ecosystem and the tourism industry. In West Asia, buildings defying the imagination continue to be built, an example of humankind reaching for the sky. At 828 meters tall, the Burj Khalifa is the tallest building on Earth. Rising from the desert of the United Arab Emirates, it holds the record for highest elevator, highest living space, and highest outdoor observation platform. It's a powerful symbol of human civilization's desire to innovate and attain new heights. The civilizations of Asia exist in harmony despite their diversity. Each carries on the spirit and bloodline of a nation. Civilizations, while they need to protect themselves in the course of being passed down through the generations, also need to innovate and advance with the times. China, Japan, Korea, Mongolia. These countries make up East Asia, the most densely populated region on the planet and the producer of nearly half the world's rice. With their proximity and their similar history and traditions, they form the East Asian cultural sphere. Southeast Asia, located at the point where the Pacific and Indian Oceans meet, comprises 11 countries, including Laos, Malaysia, Brunei, and East Timor. In the densely populated coastal areas, different faiths and cultures are flourishing. This diversity has, over the millennia, given Southeast Asia a sense of uniqueness. South Asia stretches from the Bay of Bengal in the east to the Arabian Sea in the west, extending across a vast area covering the central and western Himalayas and the Indian Ocean. It includes the landlocked countries of Nepal and Bhutan, the coastal countries of India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, and the island nations of Sri Lanka and the Maldives. The Indian subcontinent, home to over 20% of the world's population, is geographically relatively isolated, but the favorable climate is a source of vitality and hope for the future. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan. Far from the sea, these countries in the Asian heartland form Central Asia. Located in a temperate zone, the region boasts spectacular mountains, glaciers, and oases. Since ancient times, Asian and European civilizations have met and mingled here. The region produces horses that are famous for their great strength and stamina. West Asia is the meeting point of Africa, Asia, 
and Europe. It's also the gateway from the Indian to the Atlantic Ocean, covering 20 countries, including Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Jordan, it has a total population of nearly 300 million. The Iranian Plateau, the Arabian Peninsula, the Mesopotamian Plain, the Mediterranean Sea, these names appear frequently in history books. The earliest sparks of civilization were lit here, and today the region is still bursting with optimism. This is Asia, where people gazed on the world around them, enhanced what they saw, and ushered in the dawn of human civilization. They learned to be inventive, and their creations shaped the physical world and influenced minds. To reflect on history is to see how Asian values and Eastern wisdom transcend time and inspire the present, and how, by lighting up the future, they give us hope in the path ahead. <laughs>